Hi, welcome back. This is Rakesh Nai. Today we are going to discuss about the second part of equivalence of context-free grammar and push-down automata. In this video, we are going to see if a push-down automata is there, how can we construct the equivalent context-free grammar? But before we start, a small information I'd like to say. In this channel, we produce every video in two different languages. If you want to watch this video in Hindi, kindly follow the link given in the description. And if you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe and press the bell icon so that you will get regular updates from this channel. So, let us start. As we have already seen, the theorem says a language is context free if and only if some PDA recognizes it. It means if a PDA is given, there is a context free grammar that recognizes it. And if a context free grammar is given, then there is a PDA that recognizes it. The second part already we have done, we will be doing this part. That is a PDA is given, how can we construct a context-free grammar? So we are going to design a context-free grammar from a given PDA. Basically a PDA is defined by this seven table. Q, Sigma, Tau, Delta, Q0, Z0 and F. And we want to construct a grammar that basically defined by the four tuples V, T, P and S. It means what? We are going to design a context-free grammar that will recognize the given PDA. So, what we are having common in these two? We are having the sigma is same as the terminal symbol. S is the starting symbol. And we are going to use Q and delta. That is the states and the transition. And we are going to find V, that is the variables, and P, the production that is there in the grammar. Now let us see how can I find a variable. So a variable I will find in this form q tau q. q is the state and tau is nothing but the alphabet from the stack. Let us assume that q contains two state and tau contains two alphabets that is a and b. Then if I want to write in the form of q tau q it will be like this. I will take the first element Q from a state, then an element from the transition and then one more element from Q. So this Q can contain either Q0 or Q1 and tau can contain either A or B. Similarly, one more variable I can have Q0, A, Q1. So in general, I will be having these many variables that I can generate in this format. And along with this, I'll be having the starting symbol as one more variable. So I'm going to get these nine variables of the grammar. I hope you understood how to generate the variables from the grammar. Now the next one is transition. Just to recall, how do we do transition in a push down automata? So if let us say our transition is delta of Q1, 0, B equal to Q2, Y and X, then what it is? Let us, Q1 is the state, I am getting the input symbol 0 from the input string, I will get B as the input from the, from the stack, and then Q2 is the state I will be generating, and the thing that I am going to push is X and Y. X will be pushed first, and then Y will be pushed to the stack. So, here B is replaced by X and Y is pushed. So Y is on the top of the stack. So this is how we perform a push operation or pop operation while doing transition in a push down automata. So if the transition contain only pop operation, it means here there is no push, epsilon is there. Then how we do? Let us say Q1 is the state, 0 is the input symbol and B is the stack symbol. Then Q2 is a state that, that we are going to and Epsilon is the state that we are. So it means Epsilon means nothing is pushed onto the stack. So it means we have only popped up. 
So this is how we perform transition in a PDA. Now these concepts need to be used. It means our production will be in the form of delta of Q1 is that not equal to Q0 is that not or Q0 epsilon. So both of it we need to see one after another. So the production rule is in the form V derives T V star. T is a terminal symbol and V is a variable. So if the transition is in this form, there is delta of Q1 is at naught equal to Q0 epsilon. It means we are popping what is there in the stack. Then the production will be, I will write Q1, then Z0 and then this Q0. This is my variable and it will produce me A. If epsilon is there here, the production will look like this. Now if the production is in this form, that is delta Q1 is at naught equal to Q0 is at naught. Then what we are going to do? We are going to write it in this form. Q1 Z0 derives this A will come here. Then Q0 and this A, this is one part. And then this Z0 will come to form another part. And we are going to have this blanks. So you understood from where which data came. Now we are going to fill these blanks by the states. But how to fill the blank states? That is again one more trick. So what we are going to do? The first state whatever we are going to put here supposed to be here and whatever we are going to write here it's supposed to be right here. Let us say we are going to put here Q0. So Q0 will come here and if you are putting here Q1, Q1 will come here. So our production will look like this. So any value of Q0, Q1 I can put here, here, here and here. But this rule is supposed to be followed. So one more production will be like this. In place of, in place of Q1, in place of Q1 I have written here Q0. Similarly, if I am writing here Q1, this is supposed to match the first and last symbol and in between I will be having Q1 or I will be having Q0. So this is how the production will look like. It may happen that I will be having more than one symbol here. Then what we are going to do here? Then what we are going to write here is Q1 will come, Z0 will come. It is as usual. It will derive. Then A, this symbol will come. Then Q0, A, this symbol is coming. Then B in the middle and C in the middle. Now we are having blank spaces. So these blank spaces need to be filled. By the same rule, the first and last one will be same. Then this nearby element is supposed to be same. So what we are going to fill? If I am filling here Q0, then this place also I will be filling with Q0. Similarly, if I am filling here Q1, both the places are supposed to be Q1. And this place, if I want to place Q1, here also is supposed to be Q1. It means what? Wherever blank spaces are there, I can substitute this with the help of a Q. And as I have already told that Q can be either Q0 or Q1. So other options also are possible like this. So here I can place Q0 and here I can place Q1. But the first and the last symbol is supposed to be same. So there are many other production also possible in this way. So we got all the productions. Now you understood how to find the variable and how to generate the productions. Now let us try to understand this with the help of an example. Here the number of states are given as Q0, Q1. The input symbol are A and B. The stack symbols are A and Z0. Delta is the transition function. Q0 is the starting state. Z0 is the starting symbol of the stack. And phi is the final state. Now these are the transition already given. We are going to take these transition to find the rules of the grammar. It means A whose down automata is given and we are going to design a context free grammar. So the grammar is given by V, T, P and S. As already we have known the input symbol and the terminal symbol of the grammar are same and it is nothing but A and B here. S is the starting state and here Q0 is the starting state of the PDA. So both of them supposed to be same. Now let us take this particular transition. 
delta of q0 az0 equal to q0 az0. As I have already told you, it's supposed to be there in this particular form. qz0 blank derives a q0 a then blank blank z0 blank. So in this blank basis, we need to fill this with the help of the state q0 and q1 with the condition that this symbol here and the last symbol supposed to be same and these two symbols supposed to be same. So we can have these many options. Similarly, let us take the second transition. This is delta of Q0AA equal to Q0AA. In the same argument, we can generate these many production. The next production rule is delta of Q0BA equal to Q1 epsilon. For this, we'll be having this particular transition. The next transition is Q1 B A equal to Q1 epsilon. For this, we'll get this particular production. Delta of Q1 epsilon Z0 equal to Q1 epsilon. For this, I'll write Q1 Z0 Q1 derive epsilon. Now, the starting symbol. Starting symbol will be having in this format. Q0 Z0 and the blank. In this blank space, I need to write either Q1 or Q0. This is the state given in the PDF. I'll be getting Q0, Z0, Q0 or Q0, Z0, Q1. So with these data, I'm going to construct the context free grammar. Now, let us try to replace the variables, which is there in the form of Q, Tau, Q. Let us assign a single alphabet so that it can be easy for us to understand and manage it. So let us say these are the symbols that we are going to use. Q0, Z0, Q0 is A. Q0, Z0, Q1 is B. Like that, Q1, A, Q1 is H. Now let us try to replace these variables with the symbol that we have taken. So we'll be getting this A derived A, E, A. The similar way we can get these products. I hope you understood this. Now, in this grammar, I need to remove the non-generating symbol and non-reachable symbol. Now you can see there is no production starting with G, but we are having a production on which on right hand side we are having G. So we can remove this one. Now we are having here recursive production E derives A E E. So obviously it will never end. We are going to remove this. And now you see that there is no production which is there with E. So whatever production we are having on which the right hand side we are having E, we can eliminate it. So here is a production. Here is a production. We are going to eliminate all this production on which the right hand side we are having E. So these productions are also got eliminated. Now you see there is no production with C. We are going to eliminate this production also. Now all these got eliminated. So there is no production starting with A. So we are going to remove this particular production that S derived A. Now you see any other things to be removed. I hope all the things are removed now and we are going to make a list of all this. So we got this set of productions which cannot be eliminated. Now what to do? You replace all these things with the variable earlier we had and we will be getting this particular production for the grammar. I hope you understood how to generate context-free grammar from a PDA. So this is the equivalence that we have proved. Thank you for watching this video till the end. If you understood, give me a like and share among your friends. In our next video, we are going to talk about Turing machine. See you then. Take care. Bye.